uh, by my friend Abhijit. Abhijit will be talking about uh, well-being amongst doctors, uh, tipping the balance. Um, so we'll be he'll be talking about burnout and more and how to prevent it. And uh, so Abhijit is a medical director for the Koshish Hospital, uh, the hospice. Uh, you all would have actually, you know, seen uh, talk a lot, lot about it. He is also president of the NAPCAIM um, as uh, ex secretary of IAPC. So he's done a lot of work in the uh, field of palliative care. So that is his uh, specialist interest. So palliative care and end of life care is his specialization. And uh, if you actually have to look at his degrees, you will likely know that he has he's very well qualified in this area. And uh, so I've known Abhijit for a very long time. Um, uh, we did post-graduation from Ames. Um, we were at contemporaries at that time. And uh, I'm actually, you know, so, so I think amazed by the work he does. Um, I, I can't even speak in words. I mean, how the majors he shares, his stories he shares, every time, you know, overwhelms me. It brings tears to my eyes. But at the same time, I'm so happy that uh, there is someone who is actually thinking of people uh, who are, you know, are left alone. People who are actually, you know, families even give up on them. People give up on them, but they, he and his team take care of it. So over to you, Abhijit, and uh, thank you for agreeing to talk on this. Thank you, Shiv. Uh, hope I'm audible. Yes. Um, thanks for uh, giving me this platform. And uh, at the outset, I would uh, like to thank the so many unknown faces and the so many known faces. And uh, thirdly, those faces who want to remain unknown, uh, who have uh, consistently over the time helped uh, Koshish in providing care to the needy. So uh, thanks a lot. It means a lot. So to start off, uh, this musical instrument which you see out here is called the Ektara. It's a popular uh, musical instrument in uh, this part of the country and especially Bangladesh, West Bengal, uh, parts of Jharkhand, where the Bauls, the Bauls are a community of, uh, they are minstrel singers. And uh, they use this instrument, it's called the Ektara. And uh, bowls are not just ordinary singers, you see, they are uh, basically, they belong to a special uh, breed of people who are very spiritual. And they believe in connection to the Almighty through their music. And the Ektara is a fantastic reflection of that very fact, that single wired, single stringed wired instrument literally connects you. There are no multiple wires out here. There's a single wire. So it is like, you know, when you pour oil from a container to another container, it falls in a single stream, a single thick stream. So this is something which I also call Mano Nigraha, you know, minding this is mindfulness basically focusing on what you're doing so we need to focus on what we are doing being mindful is very important and this musical instrument uh, is a perfect reminder of that uh, let me begin by giving by uh, you know telling you a small small event in my life when i was in medical school uh, uh, once a friend of mine and me, we, we had gone out in the evening, you know, um, just like that after the classes and all, we had gone out in the evening and both of us had got up on, on a bus. And uh, that guy, I didn't know which bus stop to get down in. So that guy, when the bus stop came, he just jumped out of the bus. And uh, as I, you know, literally got down near the steps to step out, the bus started picking up speed. And the bus actually picked up speed very fast. And at that point of time, my only, the only thought which was going on in my mind was to how to get off the bus. And I knew that if I 
uh, you know, got down off the bus in that speed, I would injure myself. And I was actually even thinking that when I fall down, how badly would I injure myself? So this was the only thought which was going on in my mind. The very fact that I had a different choice not to get out of the bus, not to step down of the bus, never actually struck me. And you know what happened? As if by magic, some gentleman who was standing behind me, he caught hold of my arm. It was not that I was, you know, standing on a diving board ready to dive like that. I was just holding on to the handle of that, you know, bus. But somehow he sensed it. And this somehow thing actually doesn't happen. There is nothing called somehow. It is all planned out. So he actually caught hold of my hand and then I heaved a sigh of relief. Because that thought, the very option of not getting down from the bus never actually struck me. So this is life. You see, we have choices. We actually have so many choices, but we don't even want to focus on those choices. When we enter the rat race, we are just focused on one, one goal. We forget that there are so many other roads. There are so many other options which would be much safer and beautiful. We forget that. So this is how life is. And this is when accidents happen. And this is when burnout happens. Because we are just focused on one thing we stop being mindful. We stop visualizing laterally. So we all have a warrior within, isn't it? We keep fighting every day, you know, fight to get that case also done, fight to earn more, fight to be the boss. You know, it's always a fight. And once we win one fight, other, the other fight, you know, is in front of us and we keep on fighting. This fight never ends. This is chahat. This is lalach. The grasping quality which I say. We want everything. We just keep on grasping. And it never ends. And the day it ends, that day we are dead, basically. So this is our life. As I said in my previous lectures, when we are born, you know, the child is born with a closed fist. And the day we die, only then we open our fist. So the trick is in learning to open your fist early. So coming back to the warrior within. The warrior, what do you mean by a warrior? A warrior doesn't mean that you have to be brave and never cry and, you know, hit out and win all the time. No. What actually means to be a good spiritual warrior is to sit up quietly on the bed when the rest of your family members are sleeping. You can't sleep. You sit up on the bed and you take your mind, you take your soul in your hand. You cry with it. You feel it. You taste its wounds. You lick it. You love it. You endorse it. That you love it. That is a true warrior to acknowledge your suffering, to come to terms with your suffering, to be kind to yourself. That is a true warrior and that is a spiritual warrior. To understand your limitations, to know your limitations. It is fine to fall down. Everybody falls, you know, we just can't be at the top forever. But what is the best thing about falling down? When we fall down, we will fall to the ground, isn't it? We will fall back to Mother Earth. And Mother Earth is always there to take you back in her arms. It's a soft, very soft nestling ground. You can come to terms with your sorrows, with your failures. That is the beauty of falling down. And this photograph I had showed you before also in my talks. And this little girl, you can see the large swelling in her hand, osteosarcoma. And as I said, she would never look up at me when she would come. You know, she would sit very quietly. 
with she would come with her mother and she would sit very quietly and then one day i gave her a box of chocolates and just sat quietly by her and it took about half an hour and when she finally looked up at me and jaisa maine pehle bhi bataya us din maine khuda ko dekha unke aankhon mein it was pure bliss the most beautiful eyes that i have ever seen in my life and then you know what she said to me she told me that she feels bad when her mother cries for her who would have actually even thought of it so she was a spiritual warrior she understood her pain she understood her suffering she would sit nourishing her suffering but then not only her suffering she understood others suffering also and that was compassion at such a young age she was a great teacher so until you let go of who you are you cannot be what you might be don't just be that stupid warrior going and fighting away you know going to the top no you need to be a spiritual warrior so unless you let go unless you start to learn the art of opening your fist you cannot be what you actually might be and you have the potential that is the best part remember my story where my whole focus was on getting off the bus the very fact that i could actually stay back on the bus never actually struck me and by staying or staying back on the bus you see what i gained so it's like that this slide also most of you must have seen trotung troma jesar now jesar in tibetan mythology jesar was a indomitable figure he was a king you know but when jesar was small when he was a little kid he had this evil uncle called trotung and trotung schemed a lot to you know to have jesar killed because if jesar would die then the whole kingdom would come to trotung but and jesar and trotung being a very evil uncle he tried all types of malicious things to you know harm jesar and but jesar accepted all those challenges and evolved with every challenge jesar evolved he became a better person he evolved isn't that what life is like and as i say the lord blesses us with challenges it doesn't bless us with you know gifts and goody goodies it blesses us with it gives us challenges and leaves it to us to evolve so we all face challenges we all suffer that is a commonality all of you who are here listening to this lecture right now we all are in the same boat brother because all of us have endured suffering so there is a commonality there is something which is binding all of us and that is suffering all of us have suffered but then there is a difference also many of us have been bogged down by that suffering and have given up and many of us and i know quite a few actually and many of us have taken up those sufferings as a challenge and have evolved so that is the difference so what exactly is suffering suffering is our agony at losing our hopes and expectations we all expect we want this we want that expectations is the root cause of suffering and it's very easy to say no you should not be expecting you know expectations are bad and all that thing but we are at the end of the day we are all human you see when we we have taken birth again in this in this mortal body we are bound to suffer we are born to suffer as adi guru shankaracharya says so expectations are the root cause of suffering being forced to relinquish control feeling vulnerable helpless and powerless against the undesired change and loss undesired change and loss everything will not go the way you want it to happen right 
and don't think that somebody has schemed against you or something is happening uh, which which naturally you can't control because everything is planned out because if you go by the way of the karma principle then you see everything would be planned out so nothing happens by chance so you might argue that if nothing happens by chance then why should i do anything i'll just sit and let everything happen because everything is planned out but no because karma that is only a part of the karma that is your prarabdh what have what you have already endured what you have already done in the past that interest you are getting back but what you can do so that your the forthcoming life of yours can be better and that is your agami karma that you can change so a change for the better so you will not be punished for your anger you will be punished by your anger because if you react in a negative fashion the consequences also will be negative and nothing comes free it's like a you know bank account whatever you deposit only that you can withdraw so if you deposit anger today and the consequences of anger today tomorrow you have to withdraw those consequences you can't get away so you need to understand what is your true nature the nature of rikpa as they say in buddhism see we have there are two wolves within us this forget this cute little puppies we have two wolves within us and it depends one is the good wolf and one is the bad wolf so who gets stronger the wolf which you feed if you want to feed your badness if you keep on doing bad you know morality is just a code of conduct but then if you think that what i am doing somehow when the when the when your inner conscience uh, consciousness which we call rikpa when your rikpa says that no what you're doing is not exactly good not exactly conducive and you know it you won't you won't feel satisfied even after doing it so that you need to listen to that rikpa of yours that little sound which comes and then accordingly you need to act so be very mindful as to which wolf you want to feed the wolf of anger and jealousy and ego or the wolf of compassion the choice is yours i cannot write down a prescription that you have to live your life this way nobody can we are all divine by nature we all have a rikpa within the choice is yours whether you want to recognize your rikpa and rise or if you just want to dwell in your physical body you know look after and nourish your physical body and uh, be under the miss conception that this physical body is going to be with you forever that is your choice you have to take the call now coming to burnout burnout is an erosion of the soul erosion of your rikpa it is not just an erosion of your physical body it is an erosion of your soul caused by a deterioration of one's values dignity spirit and will what can be worse than that an erosion of your soul so how do you know you have burnout so there are three basic clinical features right first is an physical and emotional exhaustion if you feel exhausted even after a moderate degree of work it's true i mean if if you have done 24 hour shifts and you're feeling exhausted fine but if you have just worked for 2 or 3 hours but you still feel exhausted you don't feel like you know getting off the couch and you don't feel like going to work so physical and emotional exhaustion is a big clinical feature the second is cynicism or depersonalization you would always react by saying oh ye to kuch bhi nahi ho sakta and we are all doomed and uh, you know that sort of things like this covid you know when the covid came uh, at that time people were sort of quite resilient about it but over the years when you started seeing friends and near ones die very difficult deaths very lonely deaths maybe very painful deaths also painful uh, 
spiritually and psychologically painful deaths. And even after death, the way the body is handled in a body bag with just four people allowed to go to the ghat. So not, not a very uh, pleasant thing. But then did, we didn't plan, you know. We never did plan. Even last year, I did talk about these things and the year before also, I believe. We never plan for our death. We never plan for the last days of your life. And this, this COVID taught us a great lesson by giving us a big slap. The COVID, this COVID is a sort of suffering. It's a teacher. And then it leaves it and the Lord left it to you how to evolve. Whether you want to accept it, you want to do something about it, or you want to be bogged down by it. So it was a great teaching. And as far as the scenario of burnout is concerned, when the COVID actually came out and the lockdown phase started, many people actually enjoyed it. You know why? Because people, there was something new. Suddenly, workplace was off. More of holidays and people stayed at home. And it was, people actually loved it for a couple of weeks and maybe months. So it was something it acted as a therapy for people who were already burnt out. But then over the years, when people started staying at home, they couldn't get out. That itself created a new sort of burnout. And again, people were desperate to go back to their workplaces. So this is the beauty of burnout. We'll come to that later. I'll explain that later. And the third feature of burnout is inefficacy. That you were a performer before and now your performance is gradually slipping. You're making more and more mistakes. You don't want to do the cases. You want to delegate your juniors to do the cases. A sort of es uh, escapism mentality. And recovery from burnout can take an average of two years. So it's not a joke. I'm not saying that everybody would take two years. It could take a few weeks. It could take a few days. It could take years also. So this, uh, this doll, right? It has a battery within it. If the, as long as the battery is charged and you switch the button on, the doll is running about here and there, here and there, tuck, 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 it is running about. But till what time does it run about? Till the battery is charged. The, when the battery is discharged, the doll stops. That is the difference. We still continue to go tuck, 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 even whenever batteries die out. That is the difference. A doll knows when to stop because its battery has died out. It stops. But we keep on flogging ourselves. We keep on flogging ourselves. Nay, aur karna hai, aur kamana hai, ye bhi karna hai, wo bhi karna hai. We don't love ourselves. That is the difference. Now, there are six areas of burnout. The first area being the workload. It could be a workload, too much work or not enough resources to work with. Right? Second is control or lack of influence or you are, you are given a lot of accountability but without any power, for example. Third is reward. You, you do not get enough pay or do not get enough acknowledgement or satisfaction from the job. The fourth is community. You being isolated, you know, say you, 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 you are not allowed to enter the consultant's room or you're, you're isolated. Nobody wants to talk to you. Conflict or disrespect. Your juniors disres disrespect you. Fairness. Discrimination or favoritism values like ethical conflicts or meaningless tasks. So these are basic six areas where burnout can happen. See, people don't quit companies. They quit their bosses. So it is very important that if you are in the higher, in, in the higher ranks in your, and most of you would be, it is very important that you take care of your juniors. 
right? Make them feel important. That is very important because people don't quit companies, they quit their bosses. Now, this is quite interesting. So which physicians have an increased incidence of burnout? Urology, I never <laughs> would have thought about it, 54%, closely followed by neurology and nephrology. And anesthesiology is, is way in the middle at 41%. So compared to other specialties, we are actually better off. And these are the statistics of uh, this year, 2020. What contributes most to burnout? Now, too many bureaucratic tasks, like, you know, paperwork and maintaining records and this and that, 55%. Spending too many hours at work, 33%. Lack of respect from employers, colleagues, et cetera, 32% and so on and so forth, right? These are just statistics. Are more women or men physicians burn out? Women, 48% women are burnt out compared to only 37% of men. So what does this mean? Are they weaker? Women are definitely more stronger. I'm not saying this to please anybody, but I, this is from direct experience that I understand that women are more spiritual creatures compared to men, right? They are more open. They love to discuss their problems. They love themselves more compared to men. And that is why they want to improve. They want to discuss. They sh are happy to share their problems with others, provided there is a compassionate ear to listen to. And that is why more women statistics, so 48% women, and not only that, a woman has to take care of her household also, plus her professional work also. So naturally, there's a double barrel gun compared to a single barrel gun here out here in case of men. So now which generation is most, most burned out? The millennial, millennial means that 25 to 39 years age group. Generation X is that uh, 40 to 54 years age group. And the baby boomers are 55 to 75 years age group. So the generation X has the maximum 48% incidence of burnout. And how do physicians cope with burnout? So how do you cope with burnout? 48% take to exercise, keeping the body fit, you know. So fine, as long, whatever, like talking with family members or close friends, isolating themselves, sleeping, playing or listening to music, eating junk food, drinking alcohol, whatever, whatever be the outlet, you know. So whatever suits you, whatever suits you, but you see 48% actually take to exercise. And uh, actually, if you talk to any psychiatrist, they will tell you that uh, walking, brisk walking is a very good antidepressant. Right? So, so that you have, you can uh, use this information to bring about a change in your lifestyle, if you so wish. And then have you ever felt suicidal? Okay. So 14% have said yes. I have had thoughts of suicide, but I've not attempted it. 1% says yes, I've attempted it. 80% say no. And 6% prefer not to answer. It's okay. It's perfectly okay. It's perfectly okay to have suicidal thoughts once a while. Right? But just be careful if those suicidal thoughts keep on repeating consistently for more than two weeks. That is when you need professional help. Right? It's okay, like suicide, I, I, I have nothing against people committing suicide. It is their body, it is their lives, and maybe suicide is a way, uh, is the last way, because they have tried everything, you know. Who would want to kill himself? Nobody wants to kill themselves for fun, you see. It's only when you perceive a lack of control, a total lack of control. You have tried every measure, but Nothing is working. And the only control which you have left is over your life. And then you sort of hit back and say that, okay, 
this is my last control and let me have it. So what are the consequences of burnout? There could be there are so many, you know, professional consequences like medical errors, increased medical errors, reduced productivity, efficacy, suboptimal patient care, your patient care suffers, increased job turnover, so on and so forth. You all know it, consequences of burnout. Now, as I was talking, the recovery from burnout. So recovery from burnout, and I was talking of COVID at that point. So when the, you know, uh, COVID, when the lockdown started, actually people were very happy because there was a recovery from burnout because there was a physical and psychological removal from the job site. So you were suddenly, you didn't have to go to office every day. You were spending more time at home. Of course, making life miserable for your wife and family members, that's a different part. But then your wife also perhaps liked your presence for a few days before she was ready to throw you out perhaps. Uh, but then it started with a physical or psychological removal. And then second is self-knowledge and acceptance. So recovery, if you want, if you are really suffering from burnout, what you need to do is to run away. Bhaglo. I have this wonderful dream which keeps on coming and, you know, I just want to go to a station and ask the guy who is standing in front of me to buy me a ticket from whichever train to whichever station. And he buys me the ticket. I just take the ticket in my hand, go to the platform, get up on the train. I really don't know which train and where am I getting down. And once the train starts, then I see my ticket and I get down at that station and maybe take the third bus coming to the station and go to the fourth hotel, which comes and stay out there for some time. So physical or psychological removal. And if you can't have those crazy plans like I have, you can have a psychological removal. Stop thinking, delete. It's a very important button in a computer, the delete, right? So delete all those rubbish stuff. Or you can be as crazy as I am running away for some time, you know, so that the reset button gradually comes into play by itself. And as you run away, as you remove yourself physically from that circumstances, that is actually very important. The physical removal, you might go take a vacation, take a break, run away from those circumstances, be it for a couple of days or a week or whatever. And please throw away your mobile at that time. Switch off your mobile. If you keep that little gadget still on, then nothing is going to happen. And once you go without your mobile, then you're cut off from all this media. And then you can actually sit down on a comfortable bench and watch the sunrise, watch the sunset, listen to the birds, listen to your rikpa, come to terms with yourself. Coming to terms with your suffering is going to be very important. Who do you have to negotiate with? With yourself, with your rikpa. You don't have to negotiate with anybody else, but with yourself. For the heaven and the hell, all is within. And once you do this negotiation with yourself, so then you do what you have is a revised psychological contract. And you have emerged as a spiritual warrior because you have sat, you have taken out your suffering heart in your hand, you have tasted the wounds, you have felt the pain, you have nourished it, and now you are ready to go. Rumination. Whenever you're sitting alone, all those bad thoughts will keep on coming back like a flashback, you know? All those bad things. Your boss must have scolded you in the OT, maybe for your fault or maybe for no fault of yours. And once you're sitting alone having your cup of coffee, you can't even enjoy that cup of coffee because those beautiful aroma of the coffee is not getting into you because your mind is thinking of that, what happened in the morning and how your boss actually lambasted you. That is rumination. 
and why do you keep on ruminating because the mind loves to you know whip you as i said both heaven and hell reside within so this is your hell right it whips you it constantly gets at you and the urge is very very strong it's a very difficult habit to give up so whenever such thoughts enter your brain instead of reveling in those thoughts consciously identify those thoughts stop it there and think of something else and these bad thoughts will again come back within a few seconds to a few minutes it's fine that is normal so again you have to physically remove those thoughts bad thoughts and share it with something better and at the core of all this rumination lies fear it is okay to have fear fear is physiology it is not a pathology so it's okay we are all afraid somewhere sometime it's fine it's a normal reaction you don't have to make any bones about it you don't have to be a very very arrogant about it right remember the spiritual warrior within learning to love yourself that is important just by in the short lecture it's very difficult to actually tell you i as i said i it's not a universal prescription every person has different lives different ways of thinking so an individual prescription would be required about how you need to learn to love yourself and come to terms with yourself how others see you is not important how you see yourself actually means everything so if you're just waiting that others will confirm and say oh he is a jolly good fellow or something of that sort or is a brilliant anesthetist maybe that that would never happen don't even think of pleasing others the easiest thing is in is in pleasing yourself just please yourself if you are happy the world is happy so you see what i mean so he's not bothered he's really not bothered so he's happy with his black goggles and so if he's happy the world is happy for him because what is your world what is your world have you ever wondered what is your world your world is what you see and feel when you go to sleep your world disappears you are in some other world the world of dreams to kya ye satya hai ki wo satya hai i won't go into that discussion now but what is your world your world is what you perceive through your outgoing senses so if you rein in your outgoing senses you start having control so suffering is limited to the body and mind so you need to learn to go beyond them and in the mundaka upanishad this is another example you see two birds one is eating the fruit and the other bird is just sitting on the other branch just watching the other bird eat the fruit so the other bird represents the rikpa whereas the bird which is eating the fruit that bird represents the physical body the physical the common human being who just li lives for sensory pleasures for fulfilling all the sensory pleasures by sensory pleasures i don't mean going to the disco or having sex or something no sensory pleasures means eating drinking sleeping the basic requirements of all human beings right so you can choose to be either bird the choice again is yours you need to understand the nature of impermanence and as you see this tibetan monks they are making this beautiful mandala this is usually made when a person dies so in tibet when a person dies there is a mourning period of 40 days and in this 40 days this tibetan monks would come to the deceased house and they would keep on chanting prayers to guide those that deceased the soul the soul which is already gone now left the body it has to guide that soul to a proper body 
I won't go into the details again. Uh, this happens to be my area of interest, although. And in those 40 days, in addition to chanting, they make this beautiful mandala, this beautiful drawing. And on the 40th day, this mandala is complete and it is so beautiful. And you know what they do at the 40th day? They just destroy it. So what took them 40 days to create, they destroy it within a few seconds. And that each destruction is a teaching. It teaches them about the nature of impermanence. So Nitya Anitya Vivecha. Viveka. Nitya Anitya Viveka means the difference between Nitya means what is permanent and what is impermanent. You need to understand the difference between permanency and impermanency. Again, I won't divulge into the details of that because it's a, it by itself is a talk. So what are the steps? How can you do? How can you go about, you know, tackling your suffering, addressing burnout? First is self-awareness. You need to be aware that you are now, you know, facing burnout. You are actually on the verge of burnout. Then self-acceptance without judgment. It is fine. You don't have to be that physical warrior. What you need to be is a spiritual warrior. You need to accept your, your wounds, uh, you know, tend to your wounds, be kind to yourself. Then you should be aware of other awareness. That is, you should have compassion and other acceptance. You should also accept others the way they are. Right? And identify patterns of response in yourself and in others also. You cannot change others, but you need to accept the way they are without being too much judgmental. It's very difficult not to be judgmental, but you can try at least. So as you see in this picture, you can see that little old elderly woman. If you can see her, that is your first step to Rikpa. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, Abhijit. I think uh, it's always a pleasure to actually uh, listen uh, to you and your uh, way of thinking. I think it's just amazing. Um, so I was Dheeraj to actually be the moderator for this talk. <laughs> um, he's, he's also discussed something in, in those lines. So that's why I've actually asked uh, Dheeraj. So I'll let Dheeraj moderate and ask questions or clarify things or whatever. Uh, over to you, Dheeraj. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Chef. Uh, that was a fantastic talk, Ashish. I mean, I've heard you talk for the first time, so thank you very much. I, I think Abhijit I've, did something. Ashish is son. Okay, Abhijit. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think it was an absolute treat uh, because I, I think uh, quite a lot of what you're saying resonates with a lot of people. I think the most important message which we can give uh, people at this point of time is it's actually okay to say I am not okay, and I think that's the punchline which is being tagged in the UK at present about mental health and how people should find it okay to say that they're not okay. Mm -hmm. And I think there are quite a lot of things which you said, which actually resonates with, I think a lot of people, I'm watching the Facebook comments. And I think I really like one of the comments which was put by Sudhir Dua saying that this negotiation with self yeah. is, is what we need to realize, you know, how, how we negotiate with ourselves. And I think that was the essence of your talk. Because when you expect a lot, I mean, you suffer. But when you start accepting instead of expecting, I think you, you reduce your suffering. And I think quite a lot of your talk focused on how you need to accept what you are and how you need to accept what others are around you. What was very interesting and me being an intensivist and us being in this COVID period is that we saw a lot of people burn out because there were three things, as you rightly pointed out with burnout. One was, you know, inefficiency where we were thinking that whatever we normally do works. But with this disease, when it started, whatever we were doing, and based on a bias in principle, like if I know there's a patient who's hypoxic, I give a little bit of PEEP, I increase the oxygen, they get better, but they didn't get better. So that was one. Secondly, you had to work really hard. We, I mean, we are probably in the second wave now. We, they're expecting a third wave also. So I'm just hoping that the vaccine comes fast. But 
but exhaustion was uh, an, another problem. And I think people try to deal with this with detachment in intensive care. They say, as long as I, I think I'm not attached to what is happening to the patient, I will be detached. But the process of detachment sometimes leads to depersonalization because you are then detaching yourself so much that you get depersonalized and that leads to burnout. So how, how would you uh, advise people to, you know, protect themselves against this, especially it, it's very difficult when, you know, most of uh, doctors have what we call as an internal locus of control, isn't it? We always feel that whatever happens, I, I need to control it. We are control freaks, you know, everything we have, the buttons as intensives, you know, all these monitors and all this ionotropes at my hand, all kinds of lines. And suddenly, even then, you can't achieve what you want to achieve. And I, I think that leads to a lot of frustration. So what would you advise me on how to handle this feeling which we are having in the current scenario? And I think a lot of people might be having that. How do we deal with that? What would be your advice be in this situation? Well, I can't uh, give you a generalized prescription, but what yeah. I do is that, uh, see, compassion is something which you need to have, right? And when you have compassion, you will definitely connect. And that is a desirable quality. You need to have compassion. The second thing is to understand, understand very well, which something that medical schools did not teach us, to understand the fact that death is a physiology. It is not a pathology we are bound to die, right? The third thing, what we need to understand is to how to ensure that the person is not suffering. We can help to reduce the suffering. Say a say person is quite dyspneic. We can, we can give, say, small, very small increments, uh, say one milligram increments of morphine maybe that takes away the uh, feeling of dyspnea and COVID is actually a blessed uh, disease in, because uh, the patient does not have that sense of dyspnea. You know, if you see the oxygen saturation levels and the uh, expected level of dyspnea, the patient is actually not that dyspneic because of the, uh, you know, uh, uh, receptor binding to those uh, various, uh, uh, the virus binding to those uh, neuropilin receptors and all those things. So it's actually a blessing in disguise. Uh, so first is compassion. Second is to understand that death is a physiology. And third, you need to put in your best foot forward to ensure that the patient doesn't suffer much. This is at least what I do practice. And even because I know that the patient, if the patient is to pass away, it's fine. But at least I can go back with the feeling that I did everything which I could in my capacity to ensure that the patient had a sort of peaceful last few days or last few hours of life. So, so this is how I look at it. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. Death is a good outcome. And sometimes, you know, we don't realize that for, for some a group of people, death is definitely a good outcome. And I think with the advances we've had in uh, palliative care and end of life treatment, I think we've made this, we've started accepting that, you know, making death a, a good outcome is, is sometimes better. It's, it's where people struggle is when you actually are, have a young person, you know, like 45, who is coming with COVID and suddenly dies. I think sometimes it's important, isn't it, to... I don't know how you justify, maybe that was the end of his life. Maybe that was the time he was supposed to be with us and his time's up. You know, how, how do you, you know, tell yourself like, you know, okay, I did my best. I couldn't save him, but maybe his time was up. How, how do you do that? You see, uh, you really don't need to tell yourself that you need to follow certain guiding principles. Uh, as far as Hinduism and Buddhism is concerned, and uh, I basically have a slight idea of these two religions because religions are important, you know, because they provide certain guiding principles through which you would act and uh, act accordingly. So once you understand that everything, the, the, if you understand the theory of karma, because I follow the theory of karma, and then I can make a sense Suffering, as I said, everybody suffers. There is nobody that who doesn't suffer. But to make a sense of meaning out of your suffering, that is very important. And that actually is spirituality. Okay. Spirituality is all about making a sense of meaning out of your suffering. So 
when whenever we see that some patient is suffering and is on, is on the verge of death you need to negotiate with yourself and you know come up with a probable answer which satisfies your rikpa which says that yeah this probably is the cause uh, of his suffering and this probably is his end so uh, irrespective of age you know adi guru shankaracharya passed away at a tender age of 31 and so it would go on and on it doesn't matter whether you are a very good person or a very bad person or whatever it is everybody is living their own uh, lives as per their karma as per their prarabdh this is what i i believe uh, i don't have a very good idea of other religions uh, uh, so uh, how you would because whatever you do you follow certain principles being a doctor we so follow certain principles of, of intensive care for example but when we we are also human beings so being a human being i need to follow certain principles which are laid down uh, like the dharma the brahma sutras the bhagavad gita or whatever you call it so these are my principles so that's why i said like a universal prescription would not fit everybody so what uh, whatever your local cultural and your local social customs uh, and beliefs are that needs to be incorporated and this is a beautiful example which again reaffirms the fact that medicine is indeed holistic yeah and and it's a very good point because i think you know i, I remember uh, uh, giving a talk on on like it, someone asked me is science complete without god and i said maybe science is complete without god but scientists are not so you need to be guided by some principle and, and you need to have some kind of uh, you know in depth the uh, like path on 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 what you want to travel the other thing is that it's very interesting you talked about how to take time for yourself de stress throw the mobile away with this covid epidemic one thing which we have noticed is a lot of people are working from home we are having a webinar you know we we are having a virtual conferences and we've actually found that a lot of people are actually working more than what they were working before i'm actually doing more meetings than i used to attend because normally physically if it was not possible for me to go to my trust to have a meeting i'm just having it from home so i think you know what would you say about that you know should we safeguard against you know this technology and this sudden surge of work which we are facing now what would be your opinion on that i can answer that you can dissociate yourself switch off the the mic switch off the video and live back <laughs> Yeah. See, I, I mean, the, it is interesting isn't it no the reason why you are working more yeah. is that you have just come out of burnout yeah whether you choose to believe it or not some all of us suffer from some degree of burnout and this covid was a welcome because there was a physical removal from those circumstances and so when we came to our new environment we started working more we actually started loving the new technology we loved it and we are working more give it another year or so and then you see your efficiency would again go down so that <laughs> would be a new burnout coming in like the second wave <laughs> that's a good point okay, guys, yeah think, uh, we are actually coming to the end of the session um, we have to uh, start the cultural program as well and i have to set up i think that is also it's like giving up isn't it <laughs> let's go away from the academics and just enjoy yourself so we will be actually starting that in half an hour's time and uh, i need to set up for that as well so i need to actually have a, a meeting for that so uh, is it okay if we run, uh, round up everything now abhi absolutely yeah, yeah i think everybody loved your talk lots of uh, comments um, there uh, <laughs> i think you awakened their spirituality <laughs> so so i think i need to actually thank uh, all the uh, faculty today Uh, starting off from the money matters by uh, sai kala uh, anshu anshu and uh, ganesh then a good excellent talk by vikram on fast tracking and uh, excellent comments by dr hemant waikar and uh, uh, dr nema a wonderful talk on uh, pediatric hypothyroidism by punam and last but not least excellent talk by abhijit i think uh, just i think enough awakens everybody's spirituality and that's very very uh, important i think to look after themselves and ask yourself the question isn't it it's up to you what do you want to actually do with your life what do you want to do with your time what do you want to do with people around it so it's ultimately to you uh, others can only guide you but you have to decide in the end 
and thank you Dheeraj for moderating this. And thank you also to all the faculty who have actually joined in. And so at half my, we will get back together uh, for a cultural feast. And I'm going to have, I'm sure everybody's going to have a great time. So see you all guys and bye-bye. Uh, I'll see you later. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay.